Hello and welcome. I'm Gene Kane, and welcome to Sunday Dinner with Gene Kane, a special live event coming to you from Los Angeles, California. Thank you all for joining me today. Uh, I understand that there are even some international people, people from outside the USA. So we are worldwide. <laughs> that is very exciting. Uh, we're, we usually film our show and post it on YouTube, on our YouTube channel that you can subscribe to, Sunday Dinner at Gene Kane. But these are special times, and we can't have a big crew. People are shut in. They're wondering what to do. They're thinking, I need to, I need to cook every day, and I don't have ideas. So we thought maybe we could help with that. Uh, Starting out, why doesn't everyone pour themselves a little something? I have my uh, famous sage lemonade. You can see how to make that uh, for another time on our YouTube channel. Um, but I, uh, I also have this big man-sized bottle of gin that maybe we're gonna maybe we're gonna top it off with, just for a little kick. Five o'clock somewhere, as people always say. So let's do a little bit of that. Chopsticks, always gotta have your chopsticks. Cheers. Mm. That sage lemonade is made to go with gin or vodka or whiskey or tequila with that base, that citrus base. All right, uh, we want to get started. We are going to start with uh, washing our hands. Now, on the show, we edit that out. We film the show, so we've got extra stuff. We usually edit that out. But it's such a topical situation, such a topical subject today, the hand washing, that we really want to um, go through it with you. And uh, you can get, you know, these uh, soft soaps that are, you know, uh, they're all the ones that in the grocery store that are like uh, Madagascar vanilla, white tea and cucumber. Those are all out. I have like conifer pine scent. So now I sound, smell like the Christmas tree. But you uh, should wash your hands for 20 seconds. People will tell you that that is singing happy birthday twice, or you can uh, sing the first verse of goody goody, or you can just count to 20, right? Uh, and then the important thing as well is to not leave the water running in those 20 seconds. You don't wanna be wasting resources like that uh, at this time or any time. So let's dry our hands. Let's chat a little about what we're doing. We are going to make flank steak. We're going to grill it. And what is flank steak, you say? Flank steak, well, this is your flank right here, and it's the same on the animal. It's the portion under the ribs. It is not a, um, it, it is a, it's a muscular area. It's not a lot of fat. It is called a grainy meat, if you can see the grain in there in the meat. Um, it is also a sort of flat meat. So there's a couple of things that we need to do. The first thing is, is that we need to marinate a flank steak. Now, if you uh, received the, uh, uh, if you received the email with the marinating instructions and the grocery list, and you're going to cook ahead, cook along with me, then you'll pr probably have already marinated your meat. But I just wanted to go over it with you because it's important, because it's a dry meat, it's called. And like I said, there's not a lot of fat in it. So we don't, um, it, 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 we want to make it softer. So we're gonna make a marinade in a self-sealing bag, best thing. Um, because you don't, the bowls, yeah, marinade and self-seal bags made in heaven. So we take, uh, a uh, half a cup of vegetable oil, a third of a cup of soy sauce, about five, I like about 
five garlic cloves, two tablespoons of lime juice, two tablespoons of red wine, uh, a little bit of sugar. Your uh, marinades should always have a little bit of sugar. I know a lot of people say, oh, I'm going to leave that out. But there's just something molecular in there that I, I can't explain. I'm not a scientist. And uh, some Dijon mustard. I get about a tablespoon. And um, then stir it up. And you have that ready. Now, we are going to Score our meat. That's another thing that we need to do. Now, if you've already started marinating yours, you don't, you don't need to do this. This is just an extra step that's going to be a good extra step, but not completely necessary. So don't get all mad at me, all right? Um, we are going to score with a knife across, diagonally across the meat. I don't know if you can see it. Diagonally across the meat. Be very careful not to go all the way through. Um, and what this is for is because it's, like I said, it's a thin cut of meat that um, it's going to keep it edges from curling up because that will happen sometimes. And you don't want that. Um, you, you just don't want that. It's bothersome. So now we've gone the one way. We're going to flip it over. And where are we going? We're going to go in the opposite direction diagonally on this side and that is going to be the um you know the little slices that keep the uh steak from curling and it's also probably i i you know i'm maybe making this up but i think it is also going to um let the marinade get in more you know just like stabbing it or something it's just more room for the marinade so here's our our self seal bag. Just fold it over, drop it in. Okay, get off of there, garlic. Marinade. Boom. That simple. Now you also want to, you know, these these self sealing bags. They get air trapped in them. So you want to be, you know, like that friend of yours that sucks all the air out of the room when he comes in. Show your shoulder, and we're gonna we're gonna just make sure all of the air is out. Seal it up. More air, and then just fold it over and let it happen. I like to put it on a plate to put it in the refrigerator for up to six hours, at least two hours. Up to six is good. Anything longer than that, there is some acids in there. You don't want to start cooking it, and you know, then everything is sort of weird. So you just that's a good amount of time. Um, and by the magic of film and television, we have here a six hour marinated flank steak. Let me just get rid of this. I'm going to use the same tongs since it's all wrong. The steak can come out. Now, when you take the steak out, you might want to sort of squeegee it a little, or, you know, you could, you know, if you're not afraid to touch it, you could wring it with your hands, or just sort of let it drift down before putting it on your platter to wait. Look at those. Look at the, at the slices in there and you can see how the, how the uh, marinade actually has gotten in there and it looks very lovely. Uh, we're gonna leave this uh, to rest for just a few minutes. You should take it out before you start cooking it uh, about a half hour before and let it go to room temperature. That's always a good thing that you want to do with, um, with meats. So, uh, the, the, let me wash my hands again. I didn't really touch it, but I feel like I did. I feel, I feel marinated. Uh, now, one of the things is being at home, maybe you have a mixed household in carnivores and herbivores. So a really nice substitution for the flank steak 
is uh, a portobello mushroom. Look at the, look at the size of that thing. It's as big as my hand. Uh, and they're meaty and they're delicious. They're really, really quite beautiful. And uh, I'm gonna show you how we work with those uh, in just a moment when we start our grilling. We have to, uh, we're cooking on a big cast iron grill that takes up two burners uh, of the stove. It's quite heavy. Now, if you don't have this double burner cast iron grill, there, you know, you can use anything. If you have a cast iron pan, again, cast iron is such a wonderful uh, thing to cook with. But you could cook with enamel, or you could cook with your stainless or, or nonstick. You can cook it outside on the grill. That's always very special too. So don't feel like you can't do something because you think you don't have the equipment. You can always find something, you know. And, and I mean, there are some people that are lucky enough to have that whole big center grill section of their fine stoves. Yeah, I, I want one of those for Christmas, please. Um, okay, we are going to uh, start uh, well, I think I'm going to oil it before I start it. So what that entails is we're going to, we, it's always good to oil it. Just plain old corn oil, paper towel. I'm only using a half a paper towel because, you know, I, I don't want to use my last paper towel uh, on this show and then have to go to like to the bonds and find out that they, that they're out or that they have those like cheap ones. Always get the best that you can with paper towels. Uh, and I'm just gonna rub oil on the grill pan here. And it is going to, uh, of course, help cook. It is going to uh, heat up and help. It's gonna, it's gonna be our smoke signal that tells us that uh, the, the pan is ready. And I believe, and I, I could just be, again, making stuff up because I, I seem to do that. I seem to make up facts, you know, and, and, uh, and make up ideas and spread them as fact. But, but I, I think it's also going to help a little bit of cleanup. Um, let me get this back on here directly. And we're, I'm going to do a little more. You don't want to slap it, though. You don't want, you know. You don't want an oil slick here. All right. I'm going to hold this oil aside for another purpose. Before I start the uh, pan here, we are going to start one of our dishes that has um, a sauce. Uh, one of our dishes today is going to be a sandwich steak olivara and olivara vara is our um one of our producers our culinary producer and she and i over the phone perfected this one because i was having difficult some difficulties with it wasn't coming out quite right so I, we talked for a long time, figured it out over the phone, and so I thought we should name it after her. And it is going to be an Italian-style sandwich uh, of some items and the um, slices of flank steak. We're going to make three different dishes with the flank steak. Here we're going to make some fajitas. Here we're going to make the steak olivara sandwich. And then we are going to make a really fantastic uh, salad. Uh, the, a take on the wedge salad that, you know, some people love that wedge thing. So we're going to start with the Alivara sauce. And we have a medium high flame because we're going to do some sauteing. Uh, about two tablespoons of olive oil and the uh, Alivara. Mm. Thanks, Joanne. Um, and we're going to let that heat up. And 
this uh, is really a very nice dish. We, we, I, I started out more with tomato paste, all tomato paste, and that's what we lightened up with. Instead, we used uh, some fresh tomatoes and the tomato paste. Two things that we'll be using a lot of today, I, yeah, in every dish, is going to be these mini peppers that are available. I don't remember them available that, you know, when I was a kid, but they're just like a bell pepper, maybe a little bit sweeter, but they're smaller and they come in a bag of, you know, a pound bag and you just reach it and take what you need instead of, you know, if you need this much bell pepper and you, you start slicing this whole thing. It's just a convenience thing. And the other thing we're gonna use is uh, grape and cherry tomatoes. And those are just small tomatoes that can be used in sauces and sandwiches and salsas and salads. So the first thing here is we have some uh, garlic. We have chopped a few cloves. I'm gonna just chop up these last couple here. Let me move that out of the way. No, I'm not gonna move that out of the way. I'm just gonna do it right here. To see, and you know, just little slices. Doesn't have to be, you know. One of the things, again, about a lot of the things I do, uh, is I don't really need to uh, have everything beautifully, you know, the same and that sort of thing. We are taking red, red pepper flakes. Some people call them pepperoncini. Toast those in there. We will use Italian seasoning, dried Italian seasoning, uh, crush it between the palms of your hands before you, as you drop it into the oil, that's going to let it bloom. We're using two tablespoons of dried oregano, or as the English say, oregano, if you want to be all fancy. Um, and there is oregano in the Italian seasoning, but you know, it's just, it's just more. And it's just better. And we're cooking all that together. It's sort of, uh, it smells beautiful. It's, the, you, you know, I, I, I'll just spread this on a cracker. And it's sort of like, almost like the panade, uh, the bread and milk mixture when you're making meatballs. This is what it sort of reminds me of, the sort of base things that you, um, that make everything so much better. We are gonna just add our wonderful things. Here are, it's two cups. It's about eight of those mini peppers. And I use different colors. We match stick them. They're very pretty. These uh, are, like I said, are uh, I think a little bit sweeter than like the standard big bell pepper you get in the store, and they but they come multicolor in the pack. They they just a lot of fun I think, and um, and then we're gonna have plain white onion, chopped sl sliced fine in um, sort of uh, moon half moons. You could use yellow onion too if you like. Now we have about fifteen of the tomatoes. And they're just randomly hacked because they, um, some of them are going to disintegrate, some of them you're, you're going to uh, pound out, and some of them you're just going to leave for more bites. Everything has a different uh, texture, and that's what makes good eating, is that all of these different textures. That's what I was saying about everything doesn't have to be cut the same size, all these mean diced bits of things, and, and then all you get is like soup. If you could get different, uh, different textures from the same vegetables because they're sliced differently and, and, and the, when you cook them, it's just such, such, such more sensation in your mouth to make you happy. All right, now this is sauteing, sweating, and so am I. Pardon me. We are going to begin heating our pan. This is the lowest burning um, 
uh, section of the stove. This is the hottest. So we're gonna be putting the meat here. And as the meat is cooking, we're gonna put the, the fajita vegetables there as well. So we're just gonna let that start heating. And with this, and it'll tell us, uh, you'll see, you'll see that, uh, you know, billows of smoke. Uh, you know, we, we're, we're doing that, look at that, look at how beautiful. And, um, you know, uh, we're doing this live uh, because we want to share with you. And it's a little daunting for me. And uh, that, you know, there's a lot of live TV recently, you know, they do the plays, the, you know, the Broadway musicals, or, you know, an episode of your favorite sitcom will go live or something. But um, yeah, we do not have to worry that much. I mean, we don't have any like dance numbers or, or you know, have to worry about lines, forgetting lines. You know, the quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth down, it droppeth down my back and into my pants. You know, that, that we, we, don't, we don't have to worry about stuff like that. But uh, I may bring dinner. I may burn down the house. I may burn some bridges, but we are live and we're already into it. So let's keep going. Now here's our tomato paste. I love using tomato paste. I love those tubes of tomato paste too. That's just, you know, again, those things that we didn't have when I was a kid. You opened that can, you used a tablespoon and then the rest of it went to waste. So now we have these wonderful tubes that you just, um, you squeeze out what you need. Now we're going to put it in the bottom of the pan and sort of saute that too. You need to cook that tomato flavor in the um, tomato paste. Sort of like when you make a roux with fat and flour and how you have to cook the flour taste out. There is a, a taste that you have to um, cook through with the tomato paste in the bottom of the pan. So I made a well in the center and then put it there and sort of sauteed it in there. Now I'm gonna just incorporate it into the rest of the stuff. And of course, to help incorporate and loosen up that, we have, oh, no, I have mine there. We have red wine, about a quarter cup to loosen it up. Now we also want to put some um, put some water in as well. Uh, again, it's going to loosen it up. Uh, again, a quarter cup and then pay attention, see what happens with it. Um, I, I keep a, a little vessel of water by the stove at all times when I'm cooking just because sometimes your whatever's happening at the bottom of your pan needs a little help. So we can uh, we can let the, how, use the water to pardon me to loosen it up a bit. We are going to liberally salt um, tomatoes, especially peppers, onions. They want salt, but tomatoes especially they cry for salt. They need salt. Uh, they beg for salt. Uh, look at how pretty. Look at, ooh, <laughs> already it is just delicious. A uh, little fresh cracked pepper, or a lot. And uh, just a little more flavor. There's a little more flavor there. And, um, you know, you, you also can, can take what I'm telling you and, and add your own ideas to it. You don't have to, uh, you know, follow the instructions that I'm telling you to the T. You know, I, I always thought, even as a kid, um, that like cookbooks, recipes, and well, those are just guidelines. That's just, that's, you know. But there are people that sit there with the book open with the glasses, like, hmm, hmm. Yeah, I'm not one of those. But um, we, We'll also be putting towards the end, we're going to be adding some fresh chopped basil. I'm gonna set that aside here while this cooks. 
down some. I'm going to cover it so that it sort of steams. And um, then the tomatoes will break down and we can sort of, sort of macerate them in there. Uh, for now, I'm going to set this aside for plating. And uh, we are going to talk about our meat and the vegetables. So, yeah. Oh, I'm going to keep that, as a matter of fact. I'm going to keep that. And we are going to do this portobello mushroom here. See, some of the top is scraped off, but that's not hurting anything. What you want to do is see where the grilling is on the underside. I'm turning this lower now to simmer, too. Sorry about that. Should have simmered. There's the, uh, the that sort of gills in there. This is a beautiful uh, creature. So we are that oil that we had in the in the in the bowl that we grilled for the grill. We're just going to brush that. We're going to brush our. Ooh, that was a lot. It's all drippy done. <laughs> catch that. Catch that. Um, just paint it. It's lovely. It's lovely. And then a little salt on there. I'm going to do the underside. Now, the portobello mushroom is so meaty and dense. It, um, and, and it has a chew that is reminiscent, especially of flank steak, but uh, you know, just of meat in general, it has that. Um, you could use other things as well. You could use some uh, big eggplant rounds, a, a paddle of nopal or cactus would be another wonderful thing. But there's just something about the portobello that is, is really, really mimics the beefiness. And I actually, I have one done from earlier. And if you see, look at these wonderful grill marks. Ah, it's getting away from me. And the inside, it's really, it's, it's quite a lovely thing. So here is, I, I don't know if you can see the smoke coming off. Looks like we're ready. So when you are doing both meat and vegetarian cells, always do the vegetarian first before you put the meat on the grill. That way there's not like a cross contamination, cross current of that. I'm gonna reheat that one. Uh, uh, so that it's fair to the, um, to the vegetarian. You don't want the, the meat touching the same, you know, the, touching the same thing as the meat. So, here is, while well, that's going, we can take a look here and see the tomatoes are, are really sort of falling apart and you could just sort of tamp them here and they will, you know, they'll thicken the sauce, they'll uh, incorporate some of them, some, leave some. You want some of that bite in there too. Don't, don't smash it all. Uh, look at, oof. Again, you can, you can really kind of eat this by yourself, but then it's not steak a la vara because there's no steak in there. Uh, and the funny thing is, I think that uh, Joanne doesn't really eat steak. I think she'd be the, the mushroom, mushroom a la vara, steak mushroom a la vara. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna slice some of the steak and put it in here when, when we're ready, or of course the mushroom. I also, in, in playing with this dish, I also used uh, criminy or baby bella mushrooms, which are standard size mushrooms, uh, but they have that same, they've got more intense flavor than the standard white black mushrooms. Look at this, it's called a pork press, I think, or a bacon press. I'm gonna press the mushroom. Because it's big, we wanna sort of push it down so that the, so that it gets all over the, um, the surface to cook. And we're gonna let that go. And we do have, for our grill, we have our fajita uh, vegetable. Here we have, again, another mushroom. We're just gonna throw the whole little grape tomato on there. There's the peppers, 
there's onions. I put some red onion in there as well. Jalapenos. Now you, you, since there's no green bell pepper here, you can make sure that you tell your guests that the green is jalapeno. And then we have the uh, uh, long green onion or spring onion, people call it. Uh, and, and again, I, this is just, you know, for today. You can put whatever you want. You can put some courgette or zucchini. You can put eggplant. You can, I've seen people put both ears of corn and then slice off and even the, the, just the corn kernels right on top. And they just sling it on there. So that is, uh, that is what happens there. I'm going to use this for the vegetable so we know. Again, you don't want to keep using, you know. Look at that. Oof. I'm going to put this in the corner here because we're going to start the meat. Um, and again, I'm going to resalt the top of that because it probably came off. Um, and you want to have that. I'm using a coarse kosher salt while I cook, which is different than regular table salt. Table salt has additives, uh, minerals, and iodine. We don't need to have that um, in, in, in the cooking salt. And it has a, more, it has a stronger flavor as well. Uh, okay, here's our meat. We are going on the grill. Hang on. Whew. Stand back, stand back. Call 911. Uh, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, it's fine, fine. Uh, so while the meat is cooking, it's only going to take four or five minutes on each side. So we want to start cooking the vegetables at the same time. Now, you know, I was talking about, oh, see, now I've used that. It's lapping up on the fire. Let me rinse this. Right. It's only going to take four to five minutes on each side, so <laughs> we want to start these vegetables. Now, I know I said that we want to keep the things separate, but just because for our time's sake, we are um, just throwing sort of everything on there, and, and that meat is probably touchy to be, but that's okay. That is okay. Put that there. A couple of tomatoes, just whole. Let's move this off. Because we're to... And we're just going to use our same platter uh, to serve on that these vegetables. We took the plate, the, the vegetables off of. It's clean. It's lovely. The vegetables are clean and lovely. Okay, we'll have to wait a minute for the onions, but that's okay. Here's some cilantro. We're not going to really cook the cilantro. Let's move that out of the way. Let's give a stir here to our olive oil. Ooh. Boy. That. That is pretty delicious. I am going to leave the cover off now to let it um, uh, cook down a little. Uh, we want to cook that down a little. I'm told that my mic is a little bit off, so hopefully you can hear me. We're going to let this cook down a bit. Roll that around a little bit. Push it around. Oof. I, I, I really want to eat this mushroom right now. <laughs> uh, like I said, and if you're not mushroom folks, I'm telling you, have you ever had, Nopal, have you ever had cactus? Oh my gosh. That is an amazing little dish. Uh, okay, how much longer? A couple more minutes for this uh, for this side of the meat. Let's, ooh, 
get back on there. Get back on there. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you, you don't touch the hollow pages of your hand. But uh, while you're cutting them, you might want to wear gloves. I take out the seeds and the ribs. People will say that doesn't matter. People will tell you that if the if the tip, if the uh, if it curls, then then uh, that's hotter. Or if the jalapeno itself is bent, that's hotter. You know what? It's a crapshoot. I tell you, I've tried every. You know, somebody says the stem. Somebody says the shape. Of it. It, it's just a crapshoot. You get one, and it's like eating a pickle, and then you get another one, and and you, you know you feel like you ate the sun. There's just really no way of telling. So if you are not uh, a good chili folk, then uh, you know that that's why I'm saying don't use green in the in the bell peppers because that way you'll know that <coughs> the jalapeno uh, is the is the green pepper. Now change of tongs. Uh, I think it's time to flip this over. And uh, oh my my. Look at that. That is just one of the prettiest. Look at this color. And then that, that's just one of the prettiest things I ever did see. Oh, my goodness gracious. I'm, I'm getting all thrilled. I'm getting, I'm getting all, uh, all out of my mind. Uh, uh, and I'm getting awfully sweaty, too. My, my, my. Uh, we, we, must, we must see the little, the little step. Okay, um, we are going to go ahead, and I think that we can turn this down, turn this off. Uh, the reason we started this first was because it did have to simmer a bit, and you know, you want those tomatoes to, to sort of break down, a lot of those tomatoes to break down, and just all the flavors to blend. That's one of the things that um, that is important to me is they a mix of flavors. They're not necessarily exotic. A lot of the stuff is things that you have already, or you know, for fresh basil, I go to the store and get that basil plant and just take the leaves off of that and use it until it until you know it withers, because I cannot grow a herb garden. It is so sad. It is so sad. It's essentially weeds, right? Can't do it. No. <laughs> Someone is asking if uh, Uber Eats could come to the door and pick up a plate. Uh, that's pretty hilarious. I like that. Whoever said that, I'm in love with you. Um, oh my gosh, this steak is so pretty. I am going to take the other mushroom off because I think that we are done there. God, that is so pretty. And it exudes a nice liquid. It, all right, let's move some stuff over so that we can move the um, white onions on. Oh, yeah, we shouldn't put those together, right? Let's try to keep them apart. You over here, you jalapenos over here. Uh, and let's, and again, you know, we like to, to keep it um, uh, compartmentalized, but it doesn't have to be, you know, laid out flat and individual and that sort of thing. You know, it's, it's, none of this is like, you know, fine French cuisine or anything, but, um, but it will taste like it with the care that you take and the joy that you take in cooking. I really think that, you know how people always, you know, mothers would tell you that, oh, it's because it's made with love. I, I think there's something real about that. I think there's the, uh, a happiness uh, imparts itself in, in the flavor somehow. Now, yeah, we're, we're going to leave them on the grill there for a while. Partly I have to dab my face. I don't have I don't have the wonderful Melanie Turner Snow doing my hair and makeup. Uh, look, I just pulled a ponytail with a schmata on because I can't 
you know, I can't comb my hair. I, mean, I need Melanie Turner Snow. Um, so we're going to cook these. They're going to, they're going to sizzle. They're going to, they're going to cook through lovely, lovely. Um, and let's see, is our thick, I think we have one more minute on our, on our steak here, on our flank steak. See how it's, um, yeah, you know, it's, oh, well, I can't, yeah, you know, it's blistering and cookies and steam rising off of that. That is just lovely. Um, seared vegetables. You know, you could even, yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of like uh, cooked fruit in, that, in this way, but um, peaches or pineapple would be very good, you know, in the, in the fajita setting. Uh, you know, there's just so many options. Uh, now, we're gonna, now when, we, when we serve this, we have both um, corn tortillas, you know, the taco-sized corn tortilla, or a burrito-sized flour tortilla. You could do whatever you want, you know. Nobody says that there, there's no burrito or there's no tortilla police. There's no, no, you know, no, it's not in the Geneva Convention what you can use a tortilla for. So you can, um, you can, you know, you could, you could have a taco and a burrito. You can use cheese, you can use sour cream, you can use additional salsa, uh, you know, on Jean Sunday dinner on a previous episode, we have my lovely pico de gallo, you could make that along with this. Uh, we have my bingo rice, a taco or a burrito needs some rice on the side, right? Check the uh, bingo rice episode to um, eat to, to, for your sides here. And you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can also follow us on uh, Instagram at Gene Sunday Dinner. And that is G-E-N-E-S-U-N-D-A-Y, not Jeans Sunday, Jean Sunday. Uh, and we also have a Facebook page, Sunday Dinner with Jean Kane. So you can follow us there. You can see the recipes on YouTube. You can make comments. You can, you can make the, di the dishes and send us pictures and what you think. One of our crew members, lovely Beth Hickey, uh, actually made some of the uh, fettuccine alfredo from uh, the episode a couple of weeks ago uh, and, and, and shared with us that, that it came out very nicely. So that's good. And um, uh, pal Linda Jenkins actually uh, told me that she made our uh, pork chops for, maybe it was for Easter dinner because Easter dinner was, was you know, it, it, there's no you couldn't you didn't have the big family gathering you know we were all we were all shut in and alone some people have you know spouses or children lucky for them but some people just a, you know maybe there's two people maybe there's one um and so you can you can make these dishes into something actually you know a special dinner okay so we are going to take the ooh, we are going to take this off now i don't know if you can see now Look how beautiful that is. I can't believe it. That is so pretty. Now, I, I, sorry, I forgot to show you that we are putting this on the very special Sunday dinner cutting board. These were made by our set decorator, Christina Giovacchini, and given to me over Christmas. And it was a lovely gesture, I, a very special thing for me uh, and this is the first time I'm actually using it uh, with you guys with all of you here to, with me today uh, this this event to me is that special that I pulled out I pulled out all the good stuff um, here's our look at our lovely little tomatoes uh, I like doing the tomatoes like this I'll leave them whole because um, they they sort of wilt and stuff when they're raw I'm not crazy for how they like pop in your mouth weird to me it's a bit odd so i don't really i don't really all right 
I'm going to turn this off. And, and we're going we're gonna to work through the smoke. Fog machine. I feel like I'm in an 80s music video. All right. I'm going to plate these. Oof. I, this stand back. I see an 80s music video. And I'm going to plate these uh, in the same grouping. Oh, maybe not the peppers next to the peppers. The peppers not next to the uh, uh, thing. And you know, do it pretty so that they, that 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 your guests or your family can see the the all of the scorch marks and the grill marks. You know, I have a nephew who, <laughs> uh, when he was very young, he was very very young. You know, we we're having a family barbecue or something. And, his grandfather asked him if he wanted a hot dog off the grill, and he told him, no, I, I don't eat food with lines on it. Is it that these are, what kind, what kind of like, you know, line in the, you know, line in the sand is that to draw? I do not eat food with lines on it. What did I say? Lines in the sand. I don't know what I just said to you. I'm, Sitting here by this hot flame, I'm losing consciousness. Uh, all righty, here's this. Now, we uh, set the meat here on the cutting board, the famous Sunday dinner with Gene Kane cutting board. Oops, this one's not off. Um, and and we're, what we're doing is we're letting it rest. Uh, and that is, when, when, whenever, whenever you always need to let your meat rest. I think you've probably known that. You should probably know that. Uh, and what happens is when you're cooking meat, the juices inside sort of constrict. And um, when you let it rest, it sort of redistributes evenly, uh, like, like natural. Uh, so that's how, that's how that happens. So you get a, you know, a nicer tasting piece of meat and uh, a juicier piece of meat. And isn't that what we all want? I can hear somebody saying, no, I really like mine dry. Uh, <coughs> dry. All right, we're gonna leave off that. We're gonna set this aside until you see it's all wonderfully scorched and lined and grilled. And we're going to set that aside until we're ready to plate. I am going to dab my forehead again. Have a little sip. You've got to make this. I could also, uh, if I could also show you how to make the the simple syrup for it with stevia instead of sugar. For all of you who take, um, who are are diabetic or watching your sugar, uh, or just if you just prefer a diet drink, if you don't want to drink your calories. You know, that's, that's a lot of people. So, and it's so nice, it's really lovely. I am going to remove these things because we are going to start, while that's resting and before we cut it, we're gonna go ahead and start up on our, uh, on our last dish. Wow, we can't be. Uh, let's move that. It, this is a salad. Uh, I devised it on my own, and uh, it's it's just it it's a lot of things that I like together that to me just seem to go together. It's got a lot of color. It's got a lot of flavor. All of these different flavors marrying together to give this unbelievable, unbelievable um, uh, taste explosion in your mouth. So, what? we are going to do is I'll set that in front. I hope you can see that. Uh, it's a take on the, uh, you know, the wedge salad. People like the wedge and I'm like, but the wedge, it's, it's really, it's just, it's iceberg lettuce. There's, it's like eating hard water. But it turns out that iceberg lettuce does have more nutritional value than people give credit for. So, uh, so that I, I, I so I, I have to uh, give that. I have to 
allow for that and say that's that's true. So I want to make it a little better than just an iceberg wedge. We're going to start with you know these you get these packages of mixed salad greens. What a great convenience they are if you can open them. And you know it's things like this radicchio and frise and spinach and butter lettuce and stuff. So you take it about a handful. It's a cup. You could do about a cup. What I like to do is I like to shred it uh, into smaller pieces. Uh, I don't like cutting salad, you know, at the table. But also, uh, cutting greens is not always great. Tearing you want to tear your greens most of the time. Frise there. Then we have our wedge, our iceberg wedge. Cut off the edge. Here's a half of a wedge. And we are going to, we're going to do like an eighth of the wedge. Eighth of the wedge right here. Right, right here, right like that. It's not really very wedgy, is it? I'm going to just, I'm going to wedgie this. How's that? Then here is the fun part. We have such an exciting um, group of things. We have the tomatoes. We have the tomatoes and I've cut them into three. Again, you don't want that you know, explosion. You want the flavor explosion, not the, not the tomato explosion. And I just drizzle everything down like a cascade and um, we are going to uh, put some Kalamata olive and Kalamata olives are very briny. I, I actually rinse them before slicing them in half. They've got this beautiful purplish brown color. Uh, slice them in half. The, you know, and again, I'm not telling you have to do this. You might say, oh, no, I, I, I want 20 Kalamata olives. <laughs> when you buy them, though, make sure that they're pitted because you can get them with the pits in there. And then, then there's an extra 20 minutes trying to pick. Oh, I was an, there's a Nacht man. Uh, some, uh, some red onion. And what I did was I sliced it very thin, uh, you know, in the, in the half moon. I'm big on the half moon slices. And then chopped it small. Um, you can see there. So again, just sort of drizzle it down, cascade it down so that it just so rests in there, rests in the wedge and gets all over the plate. The peppers. You can use one pepper. I, this is half of, of, of two different colors just because I wanted a lovely color in there. Capers. Capers are lovely, briny little things. They're actually the buds, the bud of a plant. And this is one and a half uh, teaspoons. Again, capers is one of those things. So somebody will say, oh, no, no, I, I, we're having more capers than that. Uh, they just, they're, they're briny and they're piquant and they're, they just have such a, add such a wonderful, wonderful something. <laughs> We have a little thing here. Now we have goat cheese. Uh, I, I'll say that it's tangy. I don't like that word. You know how people don't like moist, you know. I don't like tangy and I don't like nougat. I don't, I don't like those words. But here is, I'm just cutting a few rounds off of this um, log of, of, uh, of goat cheese. Uh, you could use um, uh, crumbled feta as well, if you'd like. I just, I just think that the goat cheese just um, is, is, has more something to add, more flavor to add to this dish. Uh, and then, oops. I've got to go to the refrigerator and get me a little bit of little bit of salad dressing. 
we're using balsamic vinaigrette, a simple balsamic vinaigrette. You don't want to overdo it with like a cheesy, heavy, creamy something. I'm using Ken's, uh, which is very good. Newman's Own has a terrific but light balsamic. Um, and um, also, also you can make your own, you know, what is it, three to one? Three quarter cup olive oil, one quarter cup balsamic vinegar, salt, pepper, and when you make your own, you can, of course, add herbs. I did say herbs because there's an H there. Herbs, spices, little bits of onion and stuff. All right, so we are going to, we're gonna give it some. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, yeah, see. Again, I'm not one of those guys that loves that, uh, that swimming in, in the, the, salad dressing thing all drenched but this again it's just more of that flavor we are going to use this time we're going to use the pink himalayan salt it is not sea salt a lot of times it's uh, advertises himalayan sea salt it, it's it's mined salt and it's got big it's in big pieces and when you you, you mill it like pepper and it cracks over there and then we've got some of this. So, some pepper. So, we're going to do something now that we've been needing to do. We're rested. Ooh, I'm dripping. Uh, I'm gonna get a fresh tongue and a fresh knife. And here's our thing, all right. So here we go. We are going to slice diagonally, cutting against the grain to this wonderful, ooh. Now the, the stuff, the stuff, the meat on the inside in the center is going to, because there's larger pieces, is going to be um, less cooked. It's gonna be pinker, pinker, is that a word? It's gonna be more pinky, uh, but, for those who like the rare, that's that's where I go. I mean, I, I'll I'll take my meat still mooing. I just I just love it, um, and who, you know what? Why not? All righty. Now, now I'm now I'm cutting the the center part is going to be uh longer or, you know longer you could use that for the salad uh but for the fajita and for the olivara i prefer to cut that in half again um now i am going to finish up everything okay uh, i have to make one more trip to the refrigerator i i I, we're going to get put some cheese on the uh, sandwich, but I didn't want to leave it out in this heat. It's just, uh, it's just too much heat, and it would be so, um, so, so, so like wobbly. <laughs> we just could, yeah, no, no, no wobbly cheese today, please. Uh, we're using provolone. It's a nice melting cheese. It's neutral. It's quite delicious, um, and if I can open this package, we will be in. We'll be in. All righty. So we have bread here in front of us. We have a lovely sort of a baguette or roll, I think that's a, an Italian roll. Look at this, this is at, from La Bella Bakery called the Talera roll. It's very much like, it looks very much like a ciabatta, but it's lighter, it's not as dense, and it's really, that's a really tasty roll. Here's just a simple sandwich roll. You could use bolillo, you could use, you know, the Italian roll, French roll, sourdough roll, really anything that you want or like. Um, and, um, and, and use which will, and I, the things like, you know, regular sandwich bread, maybe not. 
unless you toast it because you want a little firm. All right, so what we're going to do first is let's get the bread. Let's get the knife. We want to make sure you don't cut all the way through. That's one of the problems with like the, these rolls is that they're small and uh, <laughs> uh, it becomes kind of like a sloppy Joe sandwich. Oh, let's do this first before we cut that up. Let's take our flying steak and what we're gonna do is just gonna drop it in there a little bit, mix it up a little more here. And, you know, of course you would do more. I'm just going to do a little bit here for the sandwich. For the sandwich sake. Cut your bread. Again, not all the way through. Leave that little sort of hinge on the one side. Uh, you know, another, another bread that, that you could use for this is uh, a hot dog bun. And they, now they have all those different hot dogs, those brioche ones and... and um, the, the uh, um, what am I trying to say? Pretzel one. It, there's really a lot available. Uh, the bread wise, you, you just, you know, you get to do anything you want. Now, with the sandwich as well, I have done this both with the meat and with the um, uh, mushroom. And I'll tell you right now. Uh, if you're a meat eater, you won't miss it if you're just doing the mushroom. It is beautiful. Sometimes people will hollow out the bread um, to, to put more, uh, more fixings in the sandwich. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't think you need to. Um, because then you're losing the bread. <laughs> okay, one slice of lovely provolone. per side, and then you just drop your meat and delicious sauces and vegetables in there. You have a beautiful sandwich. You could, um, you know, uh, there's, your, there's your greens. Look at that. Just have a little salad on there. Plink. And now you're ready. So, hmm, let's move that out of the way. Now, here, what we're going to do is uh, a Kaiser roll would be fine, although it does have that that strange that the the you know the flavor the um, poppy seed on top. Look at what we're doing here now. We're taking our steak, oops, and we're putting it on top of there. And if the steak is still warm, it's okay because it's going to just sort of soften the, um, the uh, lettuce. It's going to sort of wilt it, which is nice. And then it sort of drips on there in a lovely, lovely way. So I'm going to just very quickly rinse off this side or brush off that side just to show you that we have that set oh someone is telling me and i think it is my good friend dea wanted to swap a sandwich for some green chili chicken hmm i make green chili chicken too dea I think that I think we can arrange that. Uh, I say yes. I say yes. So now we have our fajitas. I'm going to just put the whole piece there, and then the slices, just to show you our luncheon. How is that? Look at that. Now with our fajitas, of course, we're gonna want to have um, perhaps some cheese and 
Uh, there's salsa, sour cream, right, right. Some, some tortillas, right, right, right. That bread's always trying to run away from me. Let's push this over a little bit. And, you know, with those fajitas, what are you gonna want? Hey, mm. cold beer, cold beer. And you know what? If you have Corona, it is okay to drink Corona. I, 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 don't, don't not buy Corona thinking you're gonna get the Corona virus from it. I can't believe that that was actually the news, but mm. good beer, good cold beer with fajitas. Nice glass of red wine with your sandwich. How about some champagne? Nice dry bubbly champagne with the vinegar and all these flavors are briny flavors. Oh, never drink, never, never mix, never worry. What am I, what am I doing here? <laughs> now you could also, you know, do a little tequila, a little vodka, a little and then for dessert, something just so easy that, you know, you don't need to go out and buy cookies and cupcakes and things. You fill your refrigerator with fresh fruits, maybe some cookies, some lovely madeleines or uh, shortbread cookies, but something very simple for dessert. We don't, we don't need to, to go overboard, especially because we're gonna stuff on this, <laughs> right? Right? Okay, well, I think that's all of our stuff. Um, boy, that, that went fast. I, I want to make more. So uh, I'd like to say thank you to a few people. Uh, I would like to, you know, I always said that if I won an award, um, I might, the first thing I would say is probably, I'd like to thank my spouse who didn't really help much, but didn't get in the way either. But I have to say that my spouse did very much help through the shows that we filmed and as the crew and the shopper and prepping and so much for, cause it was just he and I here this, you know, for this shoot. Uh, I'd like to thank the uh, Set Decorator Society of America for indulging me, for allowing me to indulge you uh, through this, through this uh, very special event. I want, um, uh, and, this this meal is very special to me because it's it's three different meals it's a lot of the same ingredients uh, but they each dish has its own special flavor this one doesn't taste like that and and so you can spread it out over days uh, the the flying steak is an economical piece of meat that is easy to prepare and can last a lot you know can be used in uh, uh, over many uh, uh, recipes. So uh, that's a really great thing to have on hand. It usually comes in a vacuum seal pack. I think because it's a drier meat, you know, that so you don't want air to get in a butcher wrapped situation. So it also stays in your refrigerator a long time. You don't have to use it in the next couple of days, which is nice. So um, now uh, to, to thank a couple more people, I want to thank uh, our production team our executive producers, Chase Helzer and Jonathan Anderson, uh, our producer and usual set decorator. This isn't Christina, that, that's just my stuff. Uh, our producer and set decorator, Christina Jovacchini, our producer, Aurora Garcia, and our culinary producer, Joanne Vara, as in Steak Alavara. It's a really a terrific team, even though I had to do everything this time. Uh, I also want to thank Bauer Pottery for providing us with some of our plating dishes and, uh, and pouring vessels. Thank you. And um, I want to thank you all, most of all, for spending the afternoon with me, hoping to find some fun and some interesting recipes. Uh, I know this is not an easy time for all of us, but together we can get through this and we'll uh, have Sunday dinners together after that. But until then, stay safe, wear a mask, and be good to each other. Cheers.
ah, I need to make another one. 